Scientists have discovered the true ferocity of a huge volcanic eruption off the coast of Tonga in January. What would you do if you were told that the world is about to end by an unprecedented disaster that may happen soon? You might want to consider answering this question as one of the largest sleeping underwater volcanoes has recently awakened. Scientists have announced that its chances of erupting soon on an Index 6 scale have increased by 360%. If this is the case, no part of the globe will escape. But what would this mean for the world? When will the eruption happen? Keep watching to find out. You would be wrong if you think about volcanic eruptions as all peaks and mountains spewing out lava. This is because some of the most powerful volcanoes are nothing like this, and you would be even more shocked to find these world-class destroyers in the water, which is an unlikely place. We make no apologies for saying that these may be the deadliest volcanoes you will ever see, and you might be wondering why. Well, it is because you will never see them coming. Now, feel free to hold on to your stories of volcanoes erupting and spewing lava on the landscape without mercy with water nowhere close, but don't you dare to think that that is all there is. Sad but true is the fact that volcanoes thrive not only on land, but also in the water, and you will be shocked at the catastrophe that may result when water and fire meet. In light of this, the glory of Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha'apai reveals itself. This is a monstrous underwater volcano that can wreak havoc on the world. It had been initially dormant, but it recently awakened, raining down disaster on the globe with the promise of doing it again. But what kind of volcano might this be? Before that, what is the saga of volcanoes about? First, a volcano is a geological feature on the Earth's surface formed when molten rock, ash, and gases escape from beneath the Earth's crust. It is essentially a vent or opening in the Earth's surface through which magma, volcanic ash, and gases erupt. While they vary in size and shape, they are typically found near tectonic plate boundaries. The Earth, as we know, happens to be a pretty busy place below its surface, and the volcanoes are a result of its busy activities and seismic events. Beneath the volcano is a reservoir of molten rock called a magma chamber. This magma is the source of volcanic eruptions, it has a conduit, which is a pipe-like structure that connects the magma chamber to the surface. The conduit allows magma, ash, and gases to travel from the chamber to the surface during eruptions. From here we find the vent, the opening at the Earth's surface through which volcanic materials like lava flows are expelled during eruptions. Lava flows are streams of molten rock which flow down the volcano's sides. It's the visible part of the volcano. Some volcanoes have a depression at the summit called a crater, formed during eruptions. It can vary in size and shape. Take it from us, seeing a volcanic eruption in action might be spectacular. It is a breathtaking natural phenomenon after all, but no one will smile at the devastation which a major eruption may cause. However, this seems to be the specialty of Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha'apai, which we will now introduce to you. We will start because Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha'apai is an underwater volcano. Here, underwater volcanoes, also known as submarine volcanoes, produce volcanic eruptions that occur beneath the ocean's surface. They are formed when molten rock, magma, rises from the Earth's mantle and erupts through the ocean floor. This process is similar to how volcanoes form on land. There are two main types of underwater volcanoes, seamounts and submarine volcanoes. Seamounts are extinct or dormant volcanoes that have eroded over time, while submarine volcanoes are active or recently active and can still erupt. This is where Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha'apai falls sadly. But there's more to learn here. Many underwater volcanoes are found along mid-ocean ridges, which are long underwater mountain ranges that mark the boundaries of tectonic plates. Tectonic plates are moving apart at these ridges, allowing magma to well up and form a new oceanic crust. You might not know this, but underwater volcanic eruptions can be explosive or effusive, similar to their terrestrial counterparts. Explosive eruptions release gas, ash, and volcanic rock into the water. In contrast, effusive eruptions result in the slow release of lava, which can create new seafloor. Here, they often host hydrothermal vent systems. These vents release superheated, mineral-rich water into the ocean, supporting unique ecosystems of extremophiles, organisms adapted to high-temperature and high-pressure environments, which isn't bad. But here's the thing. Underwater volcanic eruptions can threaten marine life, ships, and submarines nearby. 
The release of gases and volcanic ash can also affect the atmosphere and climate. Studying underwater volcanoes is challenging due to their remote location, but it provides valuable insights into Earth's geology, the dynamics of tectonic plates, and the origin of life in extreme environments. Here, submersibles, remotely operated vehicles, or ROVs, and autonomous underwater vehicles, or AUVs, are used to explore and study underwater volcanoes. They capture images, collect samples, and monitor volcanic activity. With these instruments, scientists have also gained valuable insights into Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha'apai. But what else can we say about this volcano? In the South Pacific, this underwater volcano we're discussing lies along the Kermadec Tonga Ridge. This is a geological feature formed by the convergence of the Pacific and Indo-Australian plates. This same convergence has birthed a chain of islands and volcanoes, most of which remain hidden beneath the ocean's surface and of which Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha'apai is part. Now, Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha'apai, as it's known, consists mainly of submerged portions, with just two small volcanic islands above water serving as evidence of the volcanic activity beneath. Here, the base of this submerged giant spans a remarkable 20 kilometers in diameter on the seafloor, and it rises to a height of approximately 2,000 meters towards the ocean's surface. Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha'apai is not one that came to be overnight. Instead, previous volcanic eruptions have molded its landscape, altering its caldera's northern and southern boundaries over time. The volcano's presence is not new, as evidence of eruptions here dates back to 1108 CE. However, the volcano has not been more alive until recently, as recent eruptions in 2021 to 2022 have drastically increased the risk of a sudden eruption that may happen anywhere. But how did it start? On December 20th, 2021, the world was awakened to a mega eruption from Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha'apai. And this eruption was so significant that volcanic ash was visible from the town of Nuku'alofa. This eruption prompted advisories to airlines due to volcanic activity. If that wasn't enough, the event did not stop until the early hours of December 21st. The eruption had certainly come unannounced, but the following days saw further activity with satellite imagery revealing an expansion of the island. However, things were only about to get worse. On January 11th, 2022, the volcano was soon declared dormant, giving people a fake sense of peace. However, this was only a precursor to the main event. Hence, unexpectedly, the volcano reawakened on January 14th, releasing an ash cloud extending up to 12 miles. The eruption had been so strong that it shook the earth to its core, but this was soon followed by the worst. Then came January 15th with its eruption on a grand scale. And this time the eruption surpassed the previous ones, sending a plume up to 36 miles high into the mesosphere, setting records as the highest elevation attained by a vapor plume and impacting regions as far as Alaska and the UK. Here, there was no mistaking the loud boom sound from the massive eruption mission 6,200 miles away from the event center, so the event dwarfed even nuclear explosions. Because of this, scientists were certain that the eruption of the Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha'apai volcano on January 15th, 2022, was one of the largest and most powerful volcanic eruptions in recorded history, causing widespread devastation in Tonga. Here, a study led by marine geoscientist Sam Perkis from the University of Miami delved into the eruption's unprecedented scale, and the eruption's magnitude was compared to a hydrogen bomb's force. That is quite huge, if we must say. But what next? The study used satellite data, field observations, and drone mapping to construct a simulation that vividly depicted the eruption's impact. Nothing like this had been seen before, but all was not yet seen. Moving on, the eruption soon started up tsunami waves, having a height of up to 148 feet on Tonga Tafus Island and 56 feet on Tonga Tapu Island. The eruption released enormous water vapor into the atmosphere, equivalent to 58,000 swimming pools capacity. This infusion of water vapor has potential climate implications, potentially leading to a future with temporary warming in the years ahead, which compounded existing climate change issues. But there is more to releasing what into the stratosphere than you may think. But what is it? It turned out this phenomenon was a very damaging factor in the eruption, as scientists discovered that the ozone layer was harmed. 
It is no new news that the ozone layer has been depleting for a while, but the recent eruption has only worsened things. This is because the ozone layer's hole above Antarctica is said to have opened up unusually early this year. After putting things together, scientists believe that the Hunga Tonga volcanic eruption on January the 15th of May be responsible for this new development. The eruption's water vapor release of about 50 million tons, or 45 million metric tons, sure had more serious consequences than we thought. According to scientists, it has impacted the Earth's protective ozone layer. It is set to continue for the next few years, even after the eruption. Here, the concentrated state of water vapor is said to have increased by 10% in the Earth's stratosphere, where the ozone layer lays its protective covering over the Earth. This is as Paul Newman, the chief scientist for atmospheric science at NASA Goddard Space, puts it. So far, the eruption also set a record for the highest volcano plume, projecting ash 36 miles into the atmosphere. But that was not all. The eruption initiated atmospheric waves traveling at an astonishing speed of 720 miles per hour, encircling the globe multiple times. Ground observations confirmed the immense tsunami waves, with heights up to 148 feet on Tonga's Tafua Island and 56 feet on Tonga Tapu. However, experts believe these measurements could be underestimated. The event had drawn the attention of researchers like Shane Cronin of the University of Auckland, who soon analyzed the damage done to the landscape. The study revealed the role of shallower waters in mitigating tsunami power. However, the convergence of waves from different blasts prolonged the tsunami's threat. The most powerful blast resulted from seawater infiltrating the hot magma, generating a steam-generated eruption. This study didn't focus on the eruption's initiation mechanisms, leaving many questions unanswered. However, according to the studies, the eruption began in December, highlighting the unpredictability of volcanic behavior. Even though smaller eruptions were leading up to January 15th, the magnitude of the eruption was still surprising. The climax on January 15th unfolded in a series of eruptions ranging from minor to cataclysmic. Witnesses reported initial blasts that likely had limited impact, followed by two much louder booms triggering damaging tsunami waves. The climactic blast emerged as the most powerful, comparable in force to significant U.S. nuclear tests. This final blast led to a colossal local tsunami in the blast's epicenter, creating an unimaginable sight. A simulation showed that the displaced wave measured an astonishing 85 meters in height one minute after the blast as it traveled toward Tonga's Tofua Island. Interestingly, the study highlighted the crucial role of shallower waters along the shore. This helped in mitigating the power of tsunami waves. As it turns out, the wave's energy gradually dissipated as they neared the shoreline due to the water's movement dragging along the seafloor, reducing their velocity. This phenomenon brings to mind the behavior of substantial ocean waves further out at sea, which don't have the same forceful impact upon reaching the shore. But something was interesting about the waves. Here, waves from different blasts converged, bringing and prolonging the tsunami's threat from multiple directions. The most powerful blast resulted from seawater infiltrating the hot magma, causing a steam-generated eruption. The initial four blasts fractured rocks, allowing water to enter the magma chamber. Although the study didn't delve into the eruption's initiation specifics, other researchers have hypothesized a phenomenon termed the magma hammer, suggesting that repeated magma movements within the volcano's plumbing triggered the eruption. The seismic records also revealed a distinct pressure drop during the largest eruption. This is an uncommon occurrence in volcanic eruptions, but this eruption was different, with more complexity than initially thought. Till this very moment, the initial triggers of the eruption remain uncertain, but scientists believe that the smaller eruptions which preceded January 15th provided some insight into what was to come. But what about the impact on surrounding communities? Here, scientists acknowledge the fact that the death toll could have been much worse, but thankfully, it was not. This was partly due to the local community's swift response to the event. Here, damages to the communities were also mitigated due to the lower presence of tourists due to the ongoing pandemic. Furthermore, Tonga's main city was also protected geographically. Thankfully, it was nestled behind an island in a lagoon, acting as a natural barrier against the incoming tsunami. 
Scientists' meticulous analysis of the 2022 eruption's complexities and implications sheds light on volcanic-induced tsunamis, contributing to early warning systems and community preparedness. Ultimately, this would remain a highly significant event in history. Still, it is nothing compared to the 1883 Krakatoa eruption, a catastrophic event with far-reaching consequences. Take it from us. The 1883 Krakatoa volcanic eruption is one of the most powerful and destructive volcanic events that the world will likely ever know. This event takes us to Krakatoa, a volcanic island in the Sunda Strait between Java and Sumatra in Indonesia. The eruption began on August 26, 1883, and culminated in cataclysmic explosions over the next two days. The eruption is estimated to have been about 13,000 times more powerful than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima during World War II. It is also classified as a Volcanic Explosivity Index, VEI, 6 eruption. In case you didn't know, this is the second highest level on the scale, indicating a highly explosive and massive eruption. These eruptions are characterized by their immense energy release. During a VEI-6 eruption, a colossal volcanic plume can form. This plume consists of ash, volcanic gases, including sulfur dioxide, and other materials ejected from the volcano's vent. These kinds of eruptions also often produce extremely hot and fast-moving pyroclastic flows. These are deadly, fast-moving avalanches of hot gases, ash, and rock fragments that can race down the volcano's slopes at high speeds, engulfing everything in their path. In coastal areas, VEI-6 eruptions can generate massive tsunamis. Here, the violent collapse of volcanic material into the sea can displace water, creating large waves that travel across the ocean. VEE-6 eruptions can also lead to the collapse of the volcano's summit, forming a large crater called a caldera. This is often accompanied by the destruction of the volcano's previous cone. You must note that the immense amount of volcanic material, ash, and gases ejected into the atmosphere during a VEI-6 eruption can have global consequences. The sulfur dioxide released can lead to the formation of sulfuric acid aerosols in the stratosphere, causing temporary cooling of the Earth's climate and affecting weather patterns for several years. This can result in vivid sunsets due to the scattering of sunlight by the volcanic particles. VEI-6 eruptions have the potential to cause widespread destruction over large areas, including the loss of life, property damage, and disruption of ecosystems. And sadly, the effects of a VEI-6 eruption can linger for years, impacting agriculture, travel, and the environment on a global scale. These eruptions are relatively rare, but are among the most powerful natural events on Earth, potentially reshaping landscapes and influencing global climate patterns. Interestingly, the 1883 Krakatoa eruption shone in all the lights of a VEI-6 scale eruption. The eruption caused a massive explosion that destroyed most of the Krakatoa island, leading to the collapse of its caldera. Tsunamis generated by the eruption reached up to 130 feet, 40 meters. They devastated Java and Sumatra coastal areas, but that wasn't all. The sound of the eruption was heard as far away as Perth, Australia, and Rodriguez Island in the Indian Ocean, over 3,000 miles, 4,800 kilometers, away. Here, the eruption injected significant volcanic ash and gases, including sulfur dioxide, into the stratosphere. According to scientists, over 20 million tons of sulfur were released, which led to the formation of sulfuric acid aerosols in the stratosphere. These are tiny droplets or sulfuric acid particles, H2SO4, suspended in the atmosphere. They are often formed due to chemical reactions involving sulfur dioxide, SO2, and other pollutants emitted from sources like industrial processes, volcanoes, or the combustion of fossil fuels. These aerosols can have both natural and anthropogenic or human-caused origins and play a significant role in atmospheric chemistry, having various effects on the environment and human health. As it turns out, the release of aerosols led to the diversion of sunlight from the Earth's surface during the 1883 Krakatoa eruption. And what resulted from this was quite disheartening. It led to the diversion of sunlight from the Earth's atmosphere, promoting a temporary drop of temperature on a global scale as the world experienced a decrease of approximately 2.2 degrees Fahrenheit, 
causing scientists to study the effect of volcanic eruption on climate patterns on a global scale. Undeniably, the event was one with a series of dire consequences. In the end, the eruption and its associated tsunamis and pyroclastic flows resulted in tens of thousands of deaths. Exact casualty numbers vary, but estimates range from 36,000 to over 120,000. But while all this was happening, something was also being born. But what? It happened that during the eruption, the former island in Sunda Strait dissolved, and this left behind a caldera underneath the waterbed. However, with the volcanic activities continuing, it led to the birth of a new island known as Anak Krakatau. The name simply means Child of Krakatoa telling the story of how the new island had been born from the massive 1883 eruption. Here, this new island is special because it has stayed and endured to date. This is nothing like the usual stories of islands accidentally being born from volcanic activities, after which they disappear after a while. On the contrary, Anak Krakatau remains standing to this day. Because it is not on the same level as the nearby community, the people here can live alongside it, shielded, Ultimately, the 1883 eruption was devastating, but not all its sides were dark. This is because the Krakatoa eruption profoundly impacted the study of volcanology and the understanding of volcanic processes. It also contributed to developing the VEI scale, which quantifies the explosivity of volcanic eruptions. For scientists, this was like making gain out of pain. After the 1883 eruption, Krakatoa remained dormant for several decades. However, the volcano has since shown signs of renewed activity, with minor eruptions occurring in the 20th century. As significant as the 1883 Krakatoa volcanic eruption is, we must note that it is just one of the many types of eruptions we suffer today. Volcanoes can be classified into several different types based on their eruption style, shape, and the type of magma they erupt. Among these are shield volcanoes, which are broad, gently sloping volcanoes characterized by thin, fluid lava flows. They have a shield-like appearance and often result from non-explosive eruptions. Mauna Loa in Hawaii is an example of a shield volcano. There are also the stratovolcanoes, which are tall, conical mountains with steep slopes. They are known for their explosive eruptions due to the thicker, more viscous magma. Mount St. Helens in the USA and Mount Fuji in Japan are examples of stratovolcanoes. Cinder cone volcanoes are small, steep-sided mounds created by accumulated volcanic debris, such as ash, cinders, and volcanic rocks, ejected during explosive eruptions. They are usually short-lived, but can be quite dramatic during eruptions. The list cannot be over without the caldera. A caldera is a large, circular depression that forms when the summit of a volcano collapses after a massive eruption or the emptying of a magma chamber. Crater Lake in Oregon, USA is an example of a caldera. How about supervolcanoes? A supervolcano is a term for volcanoes capable of producing exceptionally massive eruptions, often with global climatic consequences. The Yellowstone Caldera in the USA is an example of a supervolcano. These are just a few of the many ways volcanoes manifest in our midst today. As it turns out, this phenomenon will likely remain with us till the end of the world. Hence, we can only be prepared and well-equipped to ensure that we are unharmed in cases of eruptions. This brings us back to the Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha'apai volcano. Will the eruption happen again? We cannot tell as the volcano is highly unpredictable. In the end, however, we can only let time tell while we prepare for whatever comes. We've come to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching till the end. What do you think about the Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha'apai volcanic eruption? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, and if you enjoyed this video, feel sure to like, share, and subscribe for more content like this.